Thank you. With that, um, I may um, open up the third session of this uh, morning, uh, Improving Pain Management, Delivering Results in Best Practice Corporation Models. And we'll start with Italy, where, um, meanwhile, fa the famous Law 38 has been implemented uh, in 2010, and Marco Spicino from the Ministry of Health um, in Italy will talk about the implementation status of the Law 38. I may ask all the speakers to really stick to their 10 minutes plus 5 minutes discussion framework because otherwise we are running significantly out of time uh, over the course of this, this morning and the afternoon later on if it, if it drags out. So the, scene, uh, the stage is yours, Marco. Sì, grazie. Uh, ringrazio. Many thanks for the invitation, and I will try and stick to the five minutes. Uh, I'm here to speak to you about uh, law number 38, uh, dated um, 2010. I'm Marco Spizzichino. I work uh, with the health ministry, and uh, we have uh, an office uh, for the implementation of this law. In Article 1 of this law, it is stated uh, that uh, all Italian uh, citizens uh, have the right uh, to have access to palliative care and pain therapy. This is a very specific law because for the first time it is recognized uh, that the networks are uh, different when it comes uh, to palliative care and pain therapy. So we would like uh, to have a very specific path uh, and we define uh, uh, the uh, professionals, uh, their education and training, and uh, we also place uh, a lot of importance on information campaigns. And so we created uh, the office um, that I manage, and uh, we also speak for the first time of uh, pediatric uh, palliative care and pain therapy. Uh, the research that has been done uh, by a patient's association called Cupido shows us uh, that the knowledge uh, in relation to this uh, law that is excellent is very low, and only 30% of citizens uh, know of the existence of this law. And uh, therefore, this means uh, that they cannot make use of what is available. Article 6 uh, of this law shows uh, how uh, this new project, uh, Hospital Without Pain, has been turned into a new project uh, uh, called um, a Territory Without Pain. So this is not just for complex cases. We want to see this dealt in the community and therefore, we have an army of doctors that have been specifically trained to deal with pain. And this is what we're doing at the moment, training doctors in pain management. This law was not a complete package, but the legislator did leave some details to be specified by um, the specialists, uh, and um, this uh, uh, has to be dealt at the regional level because uh, we, in terms of uh, health care, we have a federal state, so we need to share proposals and decisions uh, at the regional level, and we needed to identify as a high necessity the fact that in all the regions, uh, and in all the hospitals, there had to be something available to manage these networks because for as long as we do not know what happens on the ground, the networks cannot possibly function. Another very important aspect uh, is uh, to define uh, the professional figures that need uh, to act in palliative care and pain uh, therapy. So we have here a first uh, list that was not complete, and um, we had to complete it uh, with uh, certain medical specialists. So, as I said, the training is paramount. Uh, 
and um, scientific research ministry and the health ministry determined um, five different masters, one for uh, general medicines, one for palliative care, one for the pediatric uh, nurses and doctors, uh, and also other professional figures such as uh, nurses, uh, therapists, uh, rehabilitation, etc. But the, what we consider to be the basic part of this law is the fact um, of uh, uh, creating the minimum uh, requirements uh, to accredit the care facilities uh, because we want to ensure that all over the country we have the same level of service uh, both in the north and the south. And this has to be done by defining exactly what a pain therapy structure needs to be because this center needs to have very specific staff, specific equipment, and also easy access for the citizens. So this is the document we brought uh, to the discussion we had uh, uh, between state and regions. Uh, particularly in terms of uh, financing. And uh, I must say that this was the object of uh, maximum agreement. So we have debated of all this, and it should be approved within a month. And therefore, it will be a tool available to all the regions. Uh, we see that is made in three parts, uh, pain therapy, pediatric therapy. And um, taking into account uh, the NICE guidelines, uh, we use the same concept because each part includes uh, those uh, factors um, that determine the existence of a network. So we have um, a list of 110 specific points that need uh, to be implemented, and without them, it is not possible to have uh, pain therapy. So we want to have a country that is very homogeneous when it comes to pain care. Obviously, a paramount aspect is monitoring of uh, the implementation of the law. So we have very specific uh, tools that um, enable us uh, to uh, examine uh, the different data, both um, the f um, medicine use, uh, palliative uh, care, both uh, at home and um, in the hospitals. And um, these areas are to be found in the patient's medical history. Just to give you a few examples, uh, when it comes uh, to hospital pain management, um, we uh, saw that um, we have uh, peripheral neurostimulating implants that are important educators to understand uh, the change in medical care. And, uh, a very important element for us uh, is Article 10 of this law because this simplifies the procedure for uh, prescribing uh, drugs uh, uh, to be used in pain therapy, enabling uh, an easier way to access these drugs. Uh, and uh, you can see here pro capita consumption, uh, consumption in our country. We are much lower than other European countries, even lower than the European average. And um, we are starting from a very low level, and so we have difficult uh, in uh, taking off. Uh, this could be cultural and also um, a lack in terms of uh, um, training uh, of doctors in the use of uh, opioid medicines. We have looked at all our regions, and this shows the cultural aspect because in the north of Europe, uh, um, the use of this uh, medication is much higher compared to southern Europe. And uh, 
we see that uh, for other types of painkillers, the situation is more homogeneous. We are creating a, a European network for uh, pain management. So what we did, uh, we wrote to all member states to tell us um, uh, whether there are offices similar to the one I manage so that we could exchange information because I consider this is very important in the future and uh, we need uh, to be able to make comparison. And so I thank you for inviting me here today. In terms of communication, we have made available a small sum of money that initially was used to organize two events on palliative care that has not been looked at closely before. And we also have a project with Agenas, and we asked young people below the age of 30 to help us create a slogan, a logo, and a poster for a, screen, um, for a screenplay of uh, an advertisement. So here you see the word pain written in uh, all the languages, and when you tear the paper, there is the hope of uh, a blue sky. The slogan is, I can't uh, stand you anymore. A pain must be, must not uh, be uh, um, put up with, but eliminated. And um, this logo has to be the logo of anyone that wants to fight uh, against pain. So we are trying uh, to unite everybody through this symbol. Um, to uh, foster cooperation in Europe. And what we really like is our TV advertisement. Un giorno accadde però che la piantina si ammalò. La bambina la cudiva, ma la piantina non rifioriva. Così lei si rattristò ed in lacrime scoppiò. Su, non piangere, piccina, fece piano una vocina. Col tuo amore le tue cure, anche se non guarirò, già non sento più il dolore. E serena io vivrò. Non ti sopporto più, il dolore non va sopportato, va eliminato. www.agenas.it o .salute.gov.it Spero che abbiate potuto capire almeno le parole. Vi ringrazio. Thank you very much for the attention.